Google Docs, Google API, Google in general, they do an amazing job of democratizing access to data and APIs and giving you the ability to put stuff in the cloud in a super simple fashion. And what I want to do is I want to be able to write data to Google Drive and Google Docs, and I don't want to mount those uh, using installed software on my machine. I'd like the ability to write the docs out and then give some other people access to those documents. And I'd like to do it in a way uh, you know, that's kind of programmer friendly. And so what I need to do is I need to create, I want to create some kind of identity, some service account that isn't my email address. And I don't want to use my personal OAuth credentials and have it go right out to a document and then share that document with a group of people, right? So I, how do we do that? And it turns out what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and create an identity in the Google, Google Cloud API uh, console, we're going to try and create an identity that can be used just by the program. And there are a bunch of great walkthroughs on this, and I probably won't get to it in this. I'll, maybe I'll do another video. So whoever you are that complains I didn't give you the code for this, I'll try and do it in another one. The, the main things we need to do, there are kind of four things we need to do to make this work, and then we can give permission on the to an uh, uh, identity on the Google Drive or Google Docs. Um, we need to uh, enable API access. And the way we do that is we create a project. And, and so we create a project. That project is a scope. That scope can have different services enabled. So that way I can't create an ID and just give it a bunch of random stuff or having a project or an, like, a, like a subdomain that has access to stuff I don't want to have be billing against. right? So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project using the API console then in that project, we enable Google API access. And in my case, I'm doing Google Drive API and Google Sheets API. So now, and if I can figure out how to create an account and then how to get permissions to the doc, I've got these APIs available. So within a project, you can create a service account. A service account is a non-human account, and it lets you, um, lets you create an identity for a program. And then you can either, you could turn that pro identity off later without breaking somebody's email because it's just for a program. You could share that identity between a couple programs. You could create a custom service account for each individual program and give them all different permissions. This one has permission to write to the doc. This one has permission to read but can't modify. And you can do that by creating these service accounts. And you can give programs access to documents using the keys that are provided to bind you to a service account. So once we've created a project, which is kind of like a subdomain, and then we, and it's actually called domain in a bunch of the drop lists, uh, and then we create enable G API access in that project. We go and we create a service account in that project. We, and they call it create credentials. Uh, it's really kind of an identity. And then that identity will end up with an email address. And a lot of the Google Docs permissions are based around an email address. And so you kind of get this synthetic email address bound to this service account that you're going to use in your programs. So we create a non-person service account, we pick a name for it, we create it, and we capture the email address because we're going to give that email address write permissions to different parts of our Google Docs or Google Sheets. And it turns out that identity automatically gets a role assigned to it, uh, Google Compute, Google Engine Service Agent, and that basically lets us run this as kind of a program, right? So we've created a domain, I mean a, a project, and then we enabled the APIs in the project, and then in the project we created a service account and we gave it a role. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to generate a key, credentials. This could be, what could have been like an API key. Actually, there are three things that are supported, API keys, OAuth2 client IDs, and service accounts. API keys are generally frowned upon in a lot of ways. They're kind of like this global key. I don't want to use OAuth2 client IDs because I don't want to use a person's credentials for this, right? If that person leaves, I still want the program to be able to run. So we create, and so what we're going to do is we're going to generate the service account and then we create a JSON key uh, structure. It's kind of like a bearer token. And so that JSON token is what we would actually add to my case, Python program. And we would present that token as part of the request made to Google API, okay? So now we have a, a service account with an email address. We have a document in Google Drive, which is not in this flowchart. I gave this email address access to that. I created a token, a JSON token, that describes who I am with a secret in it. And whenever I call the API with that token, I present that secret, I become that service account, and then I can write to the document. 
And that's really all there is to it. Um, I'll give you an example here. In my case, I this is my Freeman soft domain, but if you're just in the Gmail, it would look like this. I created a project and the project is 2237. This one's been deleted, so don't think about it. And so once I created this project, um, now I what did I say I would do? I said that we would, oh, not that one. I said we create a project and then we create a, um, enable the API and then we create the service account. So, and then when I create the service account, um, that has an email address and if I have a document, I wanna share a document out there and you can see this one shared with me and somebody else. What I do is I go in and add the email address for that service account to that document. And then, like I said, you basically download this JSON token and present that JSON token as part of your request. That's it. And I can do a screen walkthrough, but they're all over the internet.